हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल चावा चार्टर सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर कवरिंग द रिमेनिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आई फेस्ड एट एम्फेसिस फॉर जावा फुल स्टैक डेवलपमेंट लीड रोल बिफोर वी स्टार्ट द वीडियो लेट्स हैव द इंपॉर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट्स वी हैव डिस्कस द जावा इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस which i faced during my interview with emphasis the information which i share or which is shared before comes from my personal experiences with the tech companies these are the real interview questions today in part 3 we will be diving into remaining part of the interview questions which i faced during my interview with emphasis so to continue with the questions question number 16 which interviewer was asked Uh, what happens internally when you start a spin book application so to an answer this question when you start a spin book applications several processes several uh, things you know happens uh, to initialize and configure uh, your applications so if i talk about the overview so first first thing is initialization Spring Boot application initialized by creating an instance of the Spring application context. This context is the central part of Spring framework and serves as a container for managing and wiring the bins. Then the next step is auto configurations. Spring Boot leverages its auto configuration feature to automatically configure various components based on the dependencies present in the class path. Then the component scanning. So Spring Boot scans the base packages and its sub packages to discover and register the bins which are marked with the annotations like component at the right service at the right controller at the right repository etc Then there is also a property resolutions where Spring Boot loads the application properties from source such as the application dot properties or application dot yaml file Then there is a dependency injections as the application context is set up spring boot resolves and injects dependencies between the bins based on their declared relationships and the use of annotations like auto wire resource <clears throat> then the, there are spring boot starters which are the set of op 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 opinion netted dependencies that bundles all necessary libraries and configure for specific use cases like web applications database security etc so uh, there is also life cycle management where spring boot manages the life cycle of bins provide the various hooks for initialization and destructions and then there is a error handling as well where spring boot sets up a default error page and error handling mechanism to handle unhandled exceptions and display user friendly error message the next question which interviewer asked was what is hibernate many to one relationship so in if i talk about in hibernate a many to one relationship is one of the common types of entity associated uh, one of sorry uh, one of the common types of entity associations you used to define a relationship between the two entities it represents the association where multiple instances of one entity are related to a single instance of another entity this relationship is also known as n gem 1 or one to many association For example consider two entities department and employee each employee can be associated with only one department but one department can have a multiple employee entities so on screen you can see the example so in the employee entity we use the many to one uh, annotation uh, to define a many to one relationship with the department entity the at the red join column if you can see on the screen This annotation specifies the column in the employee table that maintains the foreign key to the department table. With this mapping when Hibernate creates a database schema, <coughs> it will generate a foreign key in the employee table that references the primary key of the department table. Now when you fetch an employee from the database, you can access his associated department using the get department method. Similarly, you can set the department for an employee using the set department method hibernate will handle the cascading operations ensuring that when you save or update an employee the associate department is also persisted or updated accordingly 
Moving to next questions, uh, interviewer asked was what are the pipes in Angular? In Angular, pipes are a feature that allows you to transform data before displaying it to the uh, to uh, displaying it in the template. Pipes are used to format, filter, and manipulate data in a template without modifying the underlying data in the component. They provide a convenient way to apply common data transformations without cluttering the component code. Angular, Angular comes with several built-in pipes and you can also create a custom pipes to suit your specific needs. So in this example I have uh, shown is a dead pipe used for formatting debts into various string representations. So there are uh, uppercase pipe also which transform text to uppercase. Uh, then uh, there are a currency pipe also which formats a number as a currency string based on the currency locate. Then there are decimal pipes also which formats a number as a decimal strings and so on. And additionally you can uh, also create your custom pipes to perform a specific data transformations that are not uh, you know covered by the built-in pipes. Moving to next questions uh, interview ask is uh, uh, how can you ensure the availability uh, in the micro uh, services. So uh, ensuring a high availability in the microservices uh, best architecture is uh, crucial uh, to maintain a reliable and responsive system. Here are the, some of uh, the strategies uh, you know, and also the best practices to achieve the availability in microservices. The first is the redundancy and replication. So uh, you know, deploy multiple instances of each microservices across the different servers and con uh, containers to ensure redundancy and fault tolerance. Then there is a load balancing where distributing incoming requests across a multiple instances of a microservices using a load balancer. Then there is a circuit breaker pattern. So implement the circuit breaker uh, pattern to handle the failures gracefully. The circuit breaker monitors the health of a microservices and if uh, it detects failures can open the circuit and direct traffic away from the failing service reducing the risk of cascading failures. Similarly there are timeouts and retries, there are the health checks. So I think one should implement the health checks for each microservices. These checks can be probed by monitoring tools or load balancers to verify the health and the readiness of the services. Then there are automated monitoring and alerting. So you can set up, uh, you know, monitor and alert for uh, uh, your metrics and performance indicators of the microservices. The next uh, interview questions uh, uh, was uh, write a code to create a shopping cart application with hard coded values using Angular JS. So guys, here I have not uh, shown any kind of code or uh, the complete code, uh, but uh, uh, you know, uh, you if you want to write this in Angular JS, you have to include Angular JS in your HTML file, and then uh, in the HTML you need to use the ng repeat directory to display the list of products and the buttons to add them uh, to the cart. The cart contents and total are also displayed using ng repeat, and the total is calculated using get total functions. Uh, you know, uh, which can be defined in the control. So I have not write the complete code. Uh, this you can write by your or based on your uh, experience here the interviewer asked me in angular js because i had worked in the angular js and not in the view js or any other uh, uh, latest ui framework so uh, this answer is up to uh, your knowledge so yeah uh, thank you um, i hope these questions uh, were helpful and this series will uh, will be helpful uh, to you guys thank you again um, Keep watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.